Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make a DIY virtual wall with Arduino for any Roomba. This will stop your Roomba from running off of stairs or going into rooms you don't want it to be in. For projects like these, I love using PCBWay to create custom manufactured printed circuit boards. As well, make sure you check out their assembly services for any of your electronics projects and maybe even commercial projects as well. A while back, I got myself a couple of Roomba robots for cleaning and vacuuming my house. Best money I ever spent. These things are fantastic. They just work great. The only problem is, is keeping them where you want them to be. Roomba sells the, the lighthouses or the, um, the blockers, the infrared light emitters that tell the Roomba don't go here. And they're used for stopping it from going downstairs or whatever, but you don't need it for that. Mine won't fall down my stairs. But what I did want them for was for keeping the Roomba contained and out of a room when I'm making supper or whatever. So quick search online and I found the information for the code I needed. I was able to whip up this little prototype on a breadboard. It's just an infrared LED, um, uh, a resistor, just current limiting resistor, and then my wire for the five volt side feeding the LED. It's ground side switched. Uh, it works fantastic. It, uh, it just does the job. So uh, I 3D printed some cases. I'll link all of this down below. The code will be available for you as well as these files. If you don't have a 3D printer, don't worry. You can just uh, make one yourself out of anything, a case for it, or heck, you can leave it on a breadboard. It works just fine. You can power it with USB, which is what I'm going to do here because it's just as easy to plug these into like an old cell phone charger. And then I'm going to set this wherever I want the Roomba to stay out of. Now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the LED out the end here, but I'm going to leave it so I can pivot the LED either vertical or horizontal, depending on how this thing is situated. And then if I want to leave it in a permanent installation, well, we can just double sided tape it to the wall or whatever. Pretty simple little setup. Let's test it out. Okie dokie. We're going to take our Arduino Nano and we'll solder it up first. What we need to do is we need our short leg going to digital pin three and our long leg to our five volt. So what we'll do first, I think, this is, there's no need to make it too crazy pretty or anything. So we'll just go and use the resistor down through uh, as our connection here. And we'll just solder it right to the board. Uh, this is a 200 ohm resistor. You can use whatever value you have kicking around that'll work for a current limiting. Anywhere around that range should be fine for one of these LEDs. There's online calculators and stuff that'll tell you the exact value you should be using. But 200 will work fine for me today. Oogie doogie. Now, let's go ahead and do our 5 volt as well. Our 5 volt wiring that's going to go right to our LED. So we'll just go from the 5 volt regulator on the Arduino Nano. So, all right, we can get the focus to work here today. 5 volt, 5 volt. And there we go. Soldered on. No problem. Really fine wire here. I probably didn't have to use anything this fine. If these headers are on your board, we can we can leave them on or we can take them off. It doesn't really matter. Oh, it's kind of up to you. Okay, so we're gonna wanna. I think we're gonna wanna fasten. Let's fasten the Arduino down first. Um, this isn't the best case. Truthfully, I think I might redesign one because the connector doesn't come through terribly far in the end and it doesn't sit right unless you have some like double sided tape or whatever underneath it. But we can make this work with just a little bit of tinkering. I think what we'll do is we'll stick the connector through. Yeah. And then we'll uh, we'll just hot glue the Arduino 
in place. So what we'll do, we're gonna have to act a little bit quick, but we'll just hot snot the bottom here, stick the thing through and hope for the best. Two big piles, I think. They certainly don't need this much, but I want it to stick up a little way so that I catch the, the Arduino. Then we pull this through, hold it just kind of level and where we want it, and let the glue set up. And that's all there is to it. And that should stay right in place for us. Good old hot glue works wonderful in electronics projects. We can wire this up a few different ways. I think I'm just going to use the, the leg of the resistor and just tack this on there. This is going to be our short leg. All right, that's joined. Not the prettiest, but it'll do. Oops, I dropped a piece of solder down on the Arduino. So you always got to be careful to get that out of there before you power it up. That would be bad. It's actually never a good idea to solder over the board like I'm doing. It's just avoid it if you can. But for the purposes of me trying to do this on camera for you, we're going to just do that. Okay, there we go. That's sacked on there. Now, definitely not the best thing to be doing like this it wouldn't stand up to like something that's going to be transported a lot or whatever this is just not good form to have things out in the air like this but what we can do so we can go ahead and get things stuck down inside of here and just sort of glue them right to the top side here and then everything will sort of stay in place and won't short together, ideally. That's kind of the idea, but we'll, we'll see. I'm just gonna snip these programming headers off of here. We're not gonna need them in this application, so they're just too close to being shorting things out. There's no need for them. Gun, there. Now we can just lay our LED on the top side. Done deal. What you can actually do now, you can take this and glue the top side, or what we can do is just put a little gob down in there. And like I said, I still want to be able to bend this. So we can just take and just fill that cavity right there. Take a wet finger, sort of pretty it up a little bit. And just like that, we have an LED that we can still change the direction on depending on where I want this to be firing. Handy dandy. Perfect. Okay, with this just plugged into a USB battery bank, if we fire up this Roomba, get it to come out and do its thing, then it should run away from this scared anytime it sees it. So we'll put it across in front of it, boom, it stops dead. Let it go that way, put it across in front of it, boom, stops dead. Put it in front of me, stops dead. Works perfectly. Roomba is quite, well actually it's bouncing off the walls now, so it's quite, <laughs> it's getting quite confused. Let's, uh, let's stick it to the wall here. Okay, just double-sided tape that to the wall, and now the beam shoots across the doorway here. I can just plug this into any old cell phone charger, but if we fire up the Roomba and send it off in that direction, in theory, it won't go across that beam, and it didn't. Let's back up a little bit further. Actually, here, just send it back that way. And it should get close, and yep, nope, I don't want anything to do with that, and back it comes. So, it will not cross that beam. Uh, it's coming out in like a cone pattern. And that whole area is strictly off limits. See, it will not even try to go that way. So, works perfect. Absolutely wonderful. 
If you like these kind of DIY projects, go ahead and click a thumbs up on this video. If you if you want, you can support me on Patreon and help me purchase the parts for these projects. And I'll keep sharing them out open source as I figure them out. Cheers, guys.